Gastric aspirates are used for collection of mycobacterial cultures in young children. The lung's mucociliary system beats up mucus into the throat during sleep. The mucus is swallowed and remains in the stomach until the stomach empties. Before the child eats or drinks anything, and preferably before arising, the stomach can be intubated and specimens collected. Historically, three gastric aspirates yield only 25 to 50 percent positive results. Traditionally, gastric aspirates are collected in this hospital before the child awakens. However, some insurance companies will not pay for the hospitalization, and I personally find it much less traumatizing to the family to collect the specimens in my clinic. We were involved in a three-center study which showed only minimally improved yield for specimens collected inpatient versus outpatient. These results have not been replicated, and inpatient collection is thought by some to have significantly higher yield. Three gastric aspirates on three consecutive mornings should be performed for each patient. This is the number which seems to maximize yield. This film shows a right middle lobe infiltrate in the lung of a little boy whose grandfather had horribly resistant TB. I collected cultures from seven gastric aspirates, bronchoscopy, urine, and blood, hoping that he had acquired a more sensitive isolate elsewhere. Only gastric aspirate number four grew a pan-resistant TB isolate. This is his normal chest radiograph after 18 months of multi-drug resistant TB therapy. And lest you think bronchoscopy would be a better way to go, at least one study shows three gastric aspirates to be better than bronchoscopy. Two other lab tests are used for adult sputum analysis and are rarely helpful for children. The smear is a method of direct staining, and the new direct amplification tests detect the mycobacterial genetic material in the sputum. Both tests have the highest yield if there are large numbers of organisms in the specimen. Since children have few organisms in their lungs and in their secretions, these tests have a lower yield in children. TB in adolescents, however, is similar to adult disease. Adolescents have more cavitary lesions than younger children and therefore are more likely to be contagious and to have smear-positive sputum. In my experience, only the youngest babies have smear-positive gastric aspirates. This is also the group with the highest gastric aspirate culture yield, nearly 100%. So, ready to learn how to collect a gastric aspirate on your pediatric patient? Please see your printed materials for a sample instruction sheet for parents, as well as other information about collecting a gastric aspirate. The whole gastric aspirate collection procedure takes a matter of minutes, so you'll need to collect everything in advance. N95 masks for the protection of the staff, a papoose board and sheet for restraining the child, 10 French or larger nasogastric or suction tube, and a 30cc syringe with appropriate connector for your tube. You'll need a pen and a bottle of sterile baby water, specimen cup and bicarbonate tube, and if your lab does not supply a pre-prepared tube, make sure to promptly transport the specimen to the lab for neutralization of the gastric acid. You'll need a requisition and label and a good helper. So, encourage the parent to wait in the waiting room. Immobilize the child with a sheet and papoose board. Measure the expected distance from the nose to the stomach and mark this spot on the tube with your pen. Moisten the tube in the child's mouth. I like to avoid bacteriostatic lubricants. Insert the tube into the nose. Stay away from the septum and aim directly perpendicular to the bed as you advance the tube. Pass the tube into the throat. If the child doesn't swallow, take a breath, pull your mask away, puff into the child's face, and replace your mask. This maneuver frequently elicits a swallow. Look to make sure that the tube is not coiled in the mouth. When the tube reaches the pen mark, aspirate with the syringe. If no mucus returns, advance the tube slightly, roll the child on his or her side, aspirating with the syringe the whole time looking for the mucus pool in the stomach. 
If your return is less than about 5 cc's, put any yield in the container and then check the tube position by flushing air into the tube while listening with your stethoscope. If you hear air go into the stomach, instill 20 to 30 cc's of water into the tube and aspirate again. If you still have no yield, try advancing or withdrawing the tube and changing the child's position in order to find mucus. When the tube is ready for withdrawal, continue to aspirate. Frequently you'll find the mucus on the way out. Put any yield in the specimen container. Unwrap and hug the child, clean up the room, and fetch the parents. Look who's waiting for you! Look who's waiting for you! At this stage you'll need to feed and reward the child. But you must transport the specimen carefully and promptly to the lab. In review, microbiologic evaluation of the patient's TB organism is very important. However, it must be emphasized to all parties that the lack of microbiologic proof of TB in a child never rules out disease. Only positive results are helpful. The three best methods are spontaneous sputum collection, sputum induction, and gastric aspiration. The most important elements for successful gastric aspirin collection are the child needs to be strictly NPO, use a 10 French or larger tube, use water, not saline, for irrigation if necessary, and neutralize the specimen promptly.